Hey, welcome back to Hawaii Rock Awards. I'm Kevin Jones. In this episode, we're going to meet Crimson Apple, one of the hottest up-and-coming rock bands in Hawaii. They just released their debut album, so we're going to sit down and talk to them about that and see a live performance from them. Also, more stories about rock legends from the master, Dr. J, John Hart, and the latest Hawaii rock album reviews. We'll first take a look at what's going on around town. The month of November is full of rock and alternative events happening all over Hawaii. Masters of Oz, Rock Waikiki five nights a week. Catch them at Kelly O'Neill's on Saturdays, Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays, and Irish Rose Saloon on Friday nights. For more info, check out Masters of Oz social media pages. F-Bomb drops a crazy variety of rock and alternative covers at Tsunami's Waikiki on Saturdays, November 14th and 28th. Anna O'Brien's presents Rock Fest, featuring three great Hawaii rock bands, Wolfpack, Leather Tees, and Redfoot, on Saturday, November 21st. Get more information at AnnaO'Brien's.com or on Anna's Facebook page. Elephant's Big Rock Stampede keeps charging every Saturday night at the Irish Rose Saloon on Anna Road in Waikiki. And Fridays, November 6th and 20th at O'Toole's Irish Pub in downtown Honolulu. Nitro Fish rocks Tsunami's Waikiki with all your favorite rock covers every first Friday from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. 808 Shows is getting the Hawaii rock music scene together for a craft and fleet pop-up swap meet. Pick up music, gear, band CDs, arts and crafts, and all kinds of other cool stuff Saturday, November 7th at the Crossroads at Hawaiian Bryan's. Fill your ears with a Thanksgiving metal feast featuring Aphesis, Augustine, 313, Bone Canyon, and Elliptic on Black Saturday, November 21st at the Crossroads at Hawaiian Bryan's. Underworld Events brings Hatebreed to Hawaii for their 20th anniversary show, November 19th at the Crossroads at Hawaiian Bryan's. Your hookup for tickets and more info is underworldevents.com. Rush fans and Hawaii's rock musicians unite to celebrate 40 years of Canada's finest, hosted by Jamie DeMatta from 101.5 K-Rock and Sandy Storm Esmin on Friday, November 13th at Anna O'Brien's. It's Oil in the Alley CD release party with special guest Boozy Cruise on Saturday, November 21st at Downbeat Diner in Chinatown. Turn it on and turn it up. It's Corrosion AD, the edge of hard rock, hosted by Jamie DeMatoff every weeknight from 10 p.m. to midnight on 101.5 K-Rock. And you can catch the best of Hawaii's homegrown rock and alternative on the radio every Sunday night, starting at 6 p.m. on 101.5 K-Rock's Homegrown Music Hour and starting at 7 p.m. on Star 101.9's Unsigned Hawaii. Get more information on these events, stay up to date on all the rock and alternative happenings around Hawaii, and connect with your favorite artists at hawaiirockawards.com or on Hawaii Rock Awards Facebook page. Hey, you're with Hawaii Rock Awards TV. My name is Kevin Jones, giving you the full spectrum of rock and alternative music in Hawaii. And I'm here with one of my favorite bands on fire right now, Crimson Apple. How's it going, guys? Good, thank you. Yeah. It's really been a pleasure watching your upward trajectory over the last couple of years. And you have a new album out, a new single out, just off opening for all time low, sold out of the Republic. How was that? How did that feel? That was, it was amazing. Um, the crowd was actually super welcoming. Um, 
and they were screaming so loud, and it was like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> was that your that first time really playing? I'm sorry. Was that your first time playing on the Republic stage, or? Um, our second time, but it was our first time opening for a huge act like All Time Low. <laughs> awesome, and not your last. Now the album is called Hello. The song is called Hello. It just dropped, and we're gonna hear some music for you in just a few minutes. Um, what are your favorite things about playing here in Hawaii? F favorite venues, that kind of thing. Um, as far as venues, we really like Anna's, um, obviously Crossroads, we're here. <laughs> but uh, um, I think the thing about Hawaii is that everyone is very welcoming. The crowds um, are really nice. The people in the music scene are very nice. And for us, that's really cool because in the mainland, you know, it's probably a lot more cutthroat. But here, everything is very aloha. It's very, you know, safe and fun and everyone is great to work with. Fantastic. Now, going down, let's just introduce everybody quickly. Hi, my name is Colby Benson, and I am the lead singer slash keyboardist. I'm Shelby, I play rhythm guitar. I'm Carthy, I play bass. I'm Rachel, I play lead guitar. I'm Faith, and I play the drums. Four out of the five of you have the same last name, so let's talk about the origin of the band a little bit. How did a family band plus one honorary sister come together to make Crimson Apple, and how long has it been now? Uh, well, Rachel and I met when we were 14. Um, we met uh, through Brown Bags of Stardom, we started a Brown Bags All-Star Band. Um, and we've been playing together ever since then. And then after that, we started the Colby Benson Band. I'm still embarrassed of that name. <laughs> why? Why are, you, why are you embarrassed about that? People would always ask me, oh, what's your band called? The Colby Benson Band. <laughs> oh, it was the worst. But uh, we started the Colby Benson Band, and um, we brought Shelby in for that one. And uh, our dad played drums. <laughs> um, and then we played, performed together for maybe a year or two, maybe a year and a half. And then um, the two younger ones started showing interest in playing music as well. And um, they both, you know, uh, wanted to play the instruments that they're playing now, drums and bass. It worked out perfectly. Um, and when they started playing their instruments, that's when Crimson Apple started. Now you've dropped a new album and a new single. They're both called Hello, and you've got that out to the world. So what are your plans? for your introduction, your hello to the world? Uh, well, we plan to tour Japan next year. Oh. Um, we all love Japan very much. <laughs> and there's a little Japan connection in your music too, right? Um, we are actually huge fans of a band called One OK Rock. One OK Rock. Yes, they are so awesome. And uh, I think as a, as a band, uh, our biggest influence has been One OK Rock. You hear that, One OK Rock? Crimson Apple's coming to get you. <laughs> So after Japan, then what about North America? What about the United States and that big rock market there? Um, we're definitely thinking of promoting the album like everywhere that we can as much as possible. And um, we don't have any solid plans right now, but we're definitely thinking of at least going to the West Coast, seeing what's going on up there and um, pushing our music out there. So eventually we will. The color red is the color of success and the color of power and the color of energy. Crimson Apple. Now let's hear a song from them right now, and it's called... What I Want right here on What You Rock Awards TV.
and you're watching Hawaii Rock Awards TV. And now it's time for another exciting story from the life of Dr. J. This is one of Stevie Ray Vaughan's kimono, not a copy. This is one he wore. I knew Stevie all the way from when he was playing the small clubs in Texas in the early 80s to bless him when he got on that helicopter. How I came about this kimono is a pretty interesting story. Uh, one day we're at Fitzgerald's, I think it was 1981. It's a club in Houston. I had a pair of black velveteen pants with silver spangles, think kind of rhinestone cowboy hippie kind of look. Stevie looked at them and said, I love those pants. And I said, that's nice. Later, one of his band members told me, you know, everyone gives him stuff when he does that. It was really cool that you didn't. But I thought, do I really need these pants? They were kind of stage pants. So the next night I wore them again and he said again, I really love those pants. And I said, I really like your kimono. So he said, let's trade. So we did. He got the blue velveteen spangled pants and I got the kimono. I found out later it's actually a smoking jacket, but we thought they were kimonos. I was happy to have it for years. Stevie, of course, passed away. Uh, this past year, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with his band, Double Trouble. And so I decided I would break out his smoking jacket and wear it to the inductions. After the induction, Chris Layton, whipper, Stevie Ray, Ray's drummer, saw me in the Komodo and stopped and said, oh my God, where did you get that? And the next day when we talked, he remembered and said, it clicked later, I couldn't believe you still have it. And I said, well, you know what? Stevie couldn't make it, but his Komodo did. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with his band, Double Trouble. One of Stevie Ray Vaughan's most famous guitars is Charlie. Charlie was named after Charlie Wirtz. Charlie owned a guitar store in Dallas. One of Stevie Ray's best and favorite friends made guitars for Stevie. Stevie got his stuff there. Stevie loved Dan Electro pickups, but Stevie was really, really hard on guitars, really hard. So he couldn't play a Dan Electro. It's physically not a tough enough guitar to survive a Stevie Ray Vaughan set. So what Charlie Wirtz did was, Charlie took those beloved lipstick tube pickups that make the Dan Electro sound, and he dropped them into a parts caster, not really a Fender Stratocaster, something that looks like a Strat, made from various Strat parts. So he dropped the lipstick tube pickups into the Strat body and made Stevie a guitar that could hold up to Stevie's physical power while getting him those Dan Electro lipstick sounds that Stevie wanted. After he made Charlie, Charlie passed. Stevie would play this song, especially in Life Without You, which was dedicated to Charlie Wirtz. This guitar is not Charlie. However, it is one of 10 copies that Rene Martinez, Stevie's guitar tech, made after Stevie died. Kenny Wayne Shepherd has one. Santana has one. This is one of the other eight. Charlie.
Hey, how's it going? Jesse Valley here with Hawaii Rock Awards Television. Um, I'm here today to give you a short review on 11th Hour's 2012 release, Kilroy Was Here. So the other day, I'm sitting in a friend's car and I noticed the CD sitting on a dashboard. Uh, I thought I'd take a listen to it. Um, much to my surprise, it's not a heavy metal band as the name would suggest. It actually brought me back to my childhood days, uh, middle school and high school, listening to groups such as Poison and Bon Jovi and Def Leppard and Slaughter and things like that. Uh, their first track, Give It To Me, off of their 10-track album, reminiscent of uh, Poison's Talk Dirty To Me, Def Leppard's Pour Some Sugar On Me, and the vocals was definitely Brett Michaels in there. Um, so I decided to uh, listen to some more of the album, and um, it was basically the 80s all over again, all these 80s bands that I used to listen to. Um, now, if you're into 80s rock music, um, the, no matter what age you are, uh, I recommend checking out 11th Hour and Kilroy Was Here. Thanks for hanging out with us here at Hawaii Rock Awards TV. I'm Kevin Jones. Till next time, don't stop rocking.